Hi ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Workman. I'm going to take you through our practical assessment that we did today using these molecule models. So I'm going to go through these eight state, or actually nine stations here and uh, make sure you know what the models look like compared to what the questions were. So this first station, of course, this particular model has one carbon and four hydrogens. That molecule is methane. Um, carbon is capable of four bonds and the name that we um, use to describe that ability to make four bonds is tetravalence. The uh, chemical formula for that molecule was CH4. This would be the structural formula where you have the carbon with the four hydrogens and of course it is an alkane. Alright, so there's methane. Okay, now second station, station two. This is our molecule. Uh, two carbons and six hydrogens. Uh, that is ethane. And the full structural formula looked like that with the two carbons and the three hydrogens on each carbon. The general pattern for any alkane, including this ethane, is going to be CX uh, and H2X plus two. So there's twice as, or two more than twice as many hydrogens as there are carbons in any alkane. Of course, ethane is an alkane. Now on to station three. This is uh, our molecule here, three carbons, and notice there's a double connection between those two carbons. If you count the total number of hydrogens, it's six. So this molecule is propene. If we're gonna do a skeletal formula for this molecule, it would look like this, although you could switch that around and put the double line on the left side. Of course, it is um, an alkene. The general pattern formula for this molecule would be CXH2X. Any alkene that has just one double bond in the chain is going to have twice as many hydrogens total as there are carbons. Okay, so that's that was station three, propene. Here's station four. Station four was this molecule, and it is cyclobutane. Uh, it is technically a cyclic alkane or a cycloalkane. If we're going to draw an isomer, we got to use the same number of carbons and the same number of hydrogens. So to draw a straight chain, what we need to do to make that work, um, I got to draw a butene. This would be one butene, two butene, either cis or trans. Two butene would be a good isomer of cyclobutane. This is the structural formula, the full structural formula for cyclobutane. Okay, so there was cyclobutane. Now on to station five here. Station five uh, was this molecule, and you can see that it's a chain of four carbons with a branch on it. The name of that molecule is 2-methylbutane. The full structural formula for this molecule would be like this. Um, in describing its boiling point um, compared to decane, the boiling point of 2-methylbutane is much less than the boiling point of decane. And this, of course, would be a branched alkane. Okay, so there it is, 2-methylbutane. Now what I started to do is I took the hydrogens off because I started running out of the white little spheres for hydrogen. So this just has the carbons. At this point, you should be able to infer how many hydrogens there are in these molecules or as part of these molecules. Uh, the name of this molecule is 2,3-dimethylbutane. The reason it's butane is because the longest chain or continuous chain of carbons you can identify would be a chain of four. And this carbon, which isn't part of the continuous chain if I count it one way versus the other, uh, and this carbon, which could be a branch off the chain, are on the second and the third carbon in the chain of four. <clears throat> so those numbers, two and three, tell me where each of the one carbon branches are on the butane molecule. The straight chain isomer of this molecule would, be, would just be a regular old hexane. Okay, so six carbons in a row. And I drew that in a semi-summarized um, formula, structural formula. This next question is describing how the intermolecular force of attraction of the straight chain isomer uh, of that molecule compares to the intermolecular force of attraction for this particular molecule. I abbreviated intermolecular force of attraction to be IMFA. And what I'm saying here is that the IMFA, or the intermolecular force of attraction of 2,3-dimethylbutane is much less 
than the intermolecular force of attraction of hexane. So the end result of that, of course, is that the boiling point of this molecule, 2,3-dimethylbutane, is much less than the boiling point of straight chain hexane. This is a branched alkane, this molecule here. Okay, on to station seven. Station seven, station seven was this molecule again. I, I left off most of the hydrogens, although I left hydrogens on that were adjacent to this double bond because that makes a difference here. This is a chain of eight carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or actually it was. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I'm sorry. This is not octene. This is heptene. Okay. Cis 3 heptene. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now, the reason it's cis is because the hydrogens are on both on the top side of this molecule. And the reason the three is here is I can, that's the lowest number carbon that's involved in the double bond. So if I count it from this end, I can use the carbon three to indicate where the double bond is. It's an alkene, and the general pattern formula here would be uh, CXH2X. This is station eight. I have a chain of eight here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbons. And I've left the hydrogens off of this these molecules uh, intentionally. This is two octine. The reason it's an oct is because I have a chain of eight here. The Y and E ending indicates I have a triple bond. I notice some of you are misspelling octine. It doesn't end in I and E, it ends in Y and E. This of course would be an alkyne, so the classification of molecules that it belongs to is an alkyne. Now these two molecules, this gets a little bit confusing, so let me really break this down. Here's my, here's my first molecule, and as I look at this, this was station nine. As I look at this, the longest continuous chain I can find is a chain of uh, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's two branches here, and there's one branch here. So there's a total of three branches. Each branch has one carbon. So all three of these branches are methyl branches. The longest chain I can find is a chain of six. So anyway, I've got to describe where those one chain branches are in this chain of six. First of all, it's a hexane. There are three one carbon branches, so we kind of call it trimethyl. Two of them are on the third carbon and one of them is on the fourth carbon. So that's three, three, four trimethyl hexane. This molecule, Again, the longest chain I can find is a chain of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is a one carbon branch, and this here, this is a two carbon branch off the main chain of six. The way I've got to name this is by naming the ethyl first, because it's alphabetical order, and then I'm going to name the methyl. I have to describe where the ethyl is, and I have to describe where the methyl is. The ethyl branch is on the fourth carbon in the chain of six, and the methyl branch is on the second carbon in the chain of six. So that's why this is a 4-ethyl, 2-methyl hexane. They are isomers of one another. They are not the same molecule. And, the re and of course, the reason they are isomers is because they have the same number of carbons and would have the same number of hydrogens. If I were showing all the hydrogens, that is, you'd see that the same number of carbons and same number of hydrogens in both molecules, they're just arranged and connected differently. Okay, everybody, that's it. Hope you learned something. Be ready for tomorrow.